What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Plan. Today I'm going to show you some nightmare fuel and we're going to look at houseplant pests up close and personal. Let's check it out. All right, so the first one we're going to start off with is going to be the spider mite, specifically the red variety. I really hate these guys, but this is what they're going to look like on most plants when you see them. Sometimes it can be a lot worse, but here is a small infestation. There's really only three or four on this leaf, but this is what they look like from afar. Almost every pest we're going to look at today is pretty hard to identify from far away, so you really have to look at the underside of your leaves to find these guys. Many people ask, why is the red spider mite red? It's because they come from the depths of hell. But anyways, let's take a closer look. These pests are often hard to find simply because they're usually under the leaves. It's very rare that I see spider mites crawling around on top of my leaves, so it's unless you're like actually looking for them actively, you might miss them. And usually the only time you'll start to see them on the top of your leaves is when it's far too late and there's just a million of them on the underside. So always make sure you check out your plants every once in a while just to make sure they don't get out of control. Another way of finding these guys is the damage they leave behind they leave really tiny specks basically of like empty cells on the plant so each cell they stick their little proboscis i honestly don't know what you would call it their little like sucker and they put it in the cell suck out the juices and so that cell will die leaving like a little light yellow brown speck so if you start to see specks appearing on your leaves you probably have spider mites crawling around these little guys start out as an egg and then they have a few different phases so they hatch into a larva and then two nymph stages followed by the actual adult stage. They can start out non-red for a little while and turn red over time, so you might see some more pale looking ones, but don't worry, those are also spider mites and you gotta watch out for them. A little tip I do wanna give you guys, there's always posts in Facebook groups and just in my DMs and everywhere else, asking if they have spider mites when they see little mites crawling around in the soil. Usually if you see stuff crawling around in the soil and not on your plant, it's not a spider mites. I've never, I've actually never seen spider mites crawling around in soil. They're going to crawl around where their food source is and that's going to be on your leaves. So if you see little brown mites or little other creatures crawling around, usually it's just fine as long as they're not like stuck to the plant and eating it. Most things that feed off of plants usually don't leave the plant, if that makes sense. If you can see those little pearl shaped things, those are going to be the spider mite eggs. Um, it's kind of cool. They look pretty. I mean, they're like these perfect little spheres. But again, I hate these guys because they really destroy my plants. And you never really see or notice them until it's too late. Also, all those like skeleton looking things are all from when they like change forms. So obviously they hatch from their egg, they're a larva, and then they have their nymph stages, and then they turn into adults. So each one of those stages, they usually shed their exoskeleton as they like evolve and mature into their final form. This next little punk, although cute, can be a real menace to orchids and other terrarium plants. I cannot figure out what the exact species of this thing is, but I have found a common name called bush snails. And again, I'm not really sure if this is the exact one because there's a lot of people who have a lot of different snails that chomp on their plants. But these ones are absolutely tiny. I mean, they're really hard to see and I really have to comb through my orchids to find them, but they're slowly starting to take over. I haven't figured out how to really defeat these other than manually, but I think I might try and raise some in a jar or something because they are kind of cool. But yeah, these guys can be real pests and they can eat the crap out of your roots and the blooms and everything else in your orchids. So you definitely don't want these to take over. I've really only found them in really humid environments and I have not seen them leave the bin. So I'm not too worried about them. But they're really tiny, but at the same time, very cute. So I probably won't eradicate them all and maybe make some pets out of some of them. I'm not sure. Next up, we are going to talk about aphids. I think these are probably pretty common, mostly outdoors. I don't think a lot of people run into these inside just because they only eat certain plants, it seems like. They don't really touch everything, and usually they have to be kind of fleshy and easy to chomp on. In my experience, these don't really spread that fast. Well, I shouldn't say that. They spread very fast, but only to certain plants. They are kind of cute, though, if you look up close. But anyways, a lot of people also think these are thrips a lot of times i see a lot of posts on facebook where they're like oh my god my plant has thrips because there's like 40 of these on the underside of their leaves and stems but usually that's not the case i mean thrips are a lot smaller and more elongated and just not quite as like big and round and chunky as aphids are aphids like most of the other pests do have uh, several forms as well from egg to nymph i think they even have a larva phase I'm not really sure what they all have, but I know there are a few phases because I see their exoskeletons and I can just see them at different developmental forms. What I think a lot of people don't realize is aphids do have a final form with wings. So that's how they're able to spread so fast. And I actually have a feeling 
that a lot of those exoskeletons that we see are once they get their wings you know once they have their wings then they fly to another plant and spread quite quickly when looking at some of these adult aphids or not i guess they're not adult aphids yet because they don't have their wings but you'll see on the sides they almost have what look like little penguin wings or something i don't know how else to describe it that's where their wings are like developing before they shed their exoskeleton and transform into their final phase with the wings so it's pretty neat that they have all these different forms. I obviously hate it because that means they can fly to the next thing. So I don't know. But these things are kind of a pain in the butt because they can spread so fast. I'm still working on some good guides on getting rid of these. I've tried a lot of different chemicals on stuff and a lot of manual work. And I haven't really found the perfect solution yet to managing these. So I haven't really made any videos about it. But once I finally get to a good process or protocol i will release videos on how to take care of a lot of these pests so right now i'm just trying a lot of stuff though i'm not quite ready for a video so sorry about that there are a lot of guides on the internet for taking care of pests so this video is mostly just an identification video so once you at least identify your pest you can go from there and find some different methods that might work for you the more i looked at these aphids the more i thought they were cute especially the little baby ones they just have a kind of a cute face, a nice little rotund body, and their little antennae that sit back almost uh, look pretty funny. I don't know. They are, they're kind of cute. They also have like a sucker that they use to pretty much damage your plants and suck all the juices out of it. And you can see that on this one that I flipped upside down. It was kind of hard to get a good angle because I'm looking top down with this microscope. But once I flipped them over, you could really see. They're almost like turtles though. It doesn't seem like he can flip back over. Lastly, let's take a look at some mealybugs. Here's an example of what they look like from far away. Usually once you see like almost snow or little white splotches on your plants, you can almost guarantee it's mealybugs. There's very few pests that look like this. In fact, I've never seen any that do. So it's a quick way to identify them. You can see that these mealybugs have been living here for quite some time because they have straight up built nests. So usually before that, you'll just see these little white spots on your plants. It's best to find them before they start laying eggs. Because once all the little babies hatch, they can really get in the cracks and the nooks and crannies of your plants, making it really difficult to get rid of them. I actually struggle with a lot of these pests because they're getting so good at hiding in like little crevices that the neem oil and then for whatever reason, bone eye doesn't even work on them either. So either I'm breeding super predators or I don't know what's going on, but they're pretty hard to deal with over time. But yeah, it's pretty interesting to see them up close. Some of these mealybugs, you can even see like how they're sucking the juices out of the plants and then they exc they excrete something called honeydew which is basically like a sugar that comes out of the that it's like after they process the plant juices and this stuff can be a problem too because it can cause mold or even attract other pests until looking under this microscope i never realized they made little nests like this just because they're so small these little babies that you can barely see them if you were to rupture that nest but it's kind of cool i also noticed that these things also get wings i should have assumed that's how they can spread so quick but i'm seeing one that almost is like waking up out of its nest with wings on it and that kind of terrifies me because it means these things can fly and i hate that because they can spread quick these things are always a pain to get rid of on uh, succulents and anything with like really tight cracks and spots that you can't quite get to mealybugs definitely are one of the more interesting pests though because they have such a weird body shape and like the little fur that they create and the little nests are just really interesting but again i hate them because they just da cause damage and they're so good at hiding well guys that pretty much sums up this video i hope you enjoyed seeing those things up close and personal it was really cool to see the bug life cycle in some cases we got to see different stages and to find out that they pretty much all can fly at the end of the day hopefully you guys don't have any nightmares and as always may your plants go strong and healthy i'll see you next time